Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Sally Roper, and I'm coming to you from Ojarias in Jamaica. And this is a very impromptu video, but I thought I would share with you how I make the utility crocs that I featured in the last kiln opening, the ones that absolutely took my breath away. And, and um, I did post it on Facebook and to a couple of groups that I'm a part of and got a overwhelming, um, an overwhelming amount of accolades and congratulations and it's beautiful and uh, thank you everybody who took the time to respond to my to my a to my video and b to my facebook posts so thank you very much for that <clears throat> what i'm going to do today is show you how i make the body of that utility crock i have three balls of clay that are um, three pounds nine now that's more than what i need but i do like to make them thick because they are a utility crock and they're going to take a little bit of abuse especially if people use them for um for um oh god i'm having a bit of a brain fart they use them for the utensils that you put beside your stove and stuff so uh so as i said i like to make them a little bit heavier than the normal pieces that i make so i am starting out with i'm not i think the actually these are three pound 3.7 pounds and i wish i knew what that was in grams and i'm sorry that i don't so I'm going to point the camera down to my wheel and show you the tools that I'm using. And then the first one, I'm going to do make it twice. The first one, I'm going to go fairly slowly as I talk you through the process of how I make the piece. And the second one is, I hope, going to be real time. And it'll only take me probably a minute or two after, uh, after I make the first one to show you what real time is all about. So uh, let me just tilt my camera down and hopefully it won't fall out of my thing. There we go. Oops, hold on, I need two hands, sorry. Oh gosh. So what I've chosen to do is give you this angle because most of the work, um, once after I center the clay, most of the work is going to be taken part on, on this side so you can really have a good view of what my hands are doing. I have my water, I have my slop bucket, I have my clay, I have the tools that I need. This is a trimming tool that I use at the end of making the, uh, making the utility crock. And this is just to lift the bat, it's called a bat lifter by Zeem Tools. Great, great tool if you don't have one and you use the smaller bats on your wheel. It is excellent at just lifting it up because of the angle of the, of the tool. It's great. And I just tuck it in uh, behind my wheel. I have a uh, diamond core. I invested and I got the diamond core uh, multi-tool. And I really like it. There's a lot of features about it I really like. But I've been away for the last five days. Uh, I was in New York and I'll maybe talk about that during the course of my video because it was a really spectacular weekend for me. Anyway, I want you to just to see how, uh, th this is a little Phillips screwdriver part of the tool and you can, there's the other end that, that tucks in and it just tucks in really nicely into the tool. But when I picked it out this morning, I'm just gonna wet it to, to show you, but it's rusting. And I do live in the Caribbean. I do live close to the sea and whatever, but I haven't even owned this maybe a month and the tool is already rusting. So I'm really disappointed about that. I still like the other features of the tool. This is a scoring tool. This is a knife. And then this is just the, uh, the pin tool. So I do like those features of the knife. I'm just, uh, I will send a note to Diamond Core and tell them that I'm, it's already starting to rust on me. And that's a bit disappointing. And I do clean this tool after I use it. It's a difficult tool to keep clean because of all of the grooves. And, and especially on this side, you know clay. Clay gets everywhere. So, um, yeah. I like the tool, but I don't like the tool. So how's that? All right, so we have that. And I'm just going to tuck these away because I don't need them. I only want the, I only want the pin tool. But they, I mean, it's a nicely designed tool. I think there are a couple of things they could have done a little bit better. All right, and then I have my measuring tools. I have a uh, caliper and I have a 12% shrink rule because my clay B-Mix 5, it, it 
shrinks 12%. I want to make these utility crocs seven inches tall and six inches wide as a finished product. So this is the perfect tool for me. And then I have just a regular tool, uh, sorry, a regular ruler. And then I have my bat. Now, what you're gonna see here is on the bat, you're going to see um, some laser, laser marks. I've gone ahead and pre-measured this using the 12% shrink rule. So let me show you the first thing I did is that, uh, and you can't see the tool, it's actually tucked in behind my camera, but you can see what it does. And <clears throat> what I did was I measured up to just under seven inches because I have a little bit of a, a little bit of a, um, a gap here between where the, where the uh, first inch starts. So I've accounted for that at the top. But these aren't exact, they don't have to be exact, but I'm making multiples, so I want to make them similar in size so I can sell them in pairs. Um, so anyway, this is at seven and a half. And then what I did was I took my ruler onto here, I put the six in the middle, and then I measured out three inches. Hold on, which one have I got? The 12%, sorry, I have to go over to the 12% shrink roll put the six in the middle and then I measure out three inches. So six, five, four, three. So that's not quite, I think this is moved. So I wanna just adjust my laser to get to around three inches and that's how wide I wanna make it. It's sensitive, so it doesn't have to be exact. But there you go. And then with the help of my, with my, uh, with my ruler as I'm throwing, I will be able to measure that properly. So now this is should be six inches wide and it should be just shy. Of, no, I've lost a little bit of height. So let me just adjust that. I'm gonna just pop it up a little bit. Sorry, it's out of the frame, but that's just because that's where I've had to put it. So now I'm just below seven inches and I'll just double check the three inches. Okay, it's gone and moved again. So six, five, four. So this is this is what this is real pottery. <laughs> so unedited version of real pottery. So there we go, three inches and three inches. So now I know how wide and and how tall I need to make I need to make my piece. Okay. So let's get at it. I'll put on my bag. I'm gonna moisten a little bit. Oh yes, and I have the uh, the diamond core. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know if I can show you this. Yowza. Let me see if I can turn this around. I have some visitors. Can you see them? I have peacocks. There's, there's four of them. <laughs> That's a little pleasant surprise. All right, so now I've rounded out my bat. I've rounded out the bottom of, of, my, uh, of my lump of clay. Again, this is um, about three pounds, seven ounces. And I'm just gonna lightly, I'm gonna lightly moisten my bat. Slap it on there, give it a couple of slaps down. And now it's solidly on my bat. I'm going to moisten it with the water here. Now, everybody has their own way of centering clay, and I have my own way, and if there's anything that you see me doing that you say, oh, I can incorporate that into, into centering my clay, but there's no right way, there's no wrong way. Well, there's probably wrong ways if you don't center it properly, but there's no exact way to, to do it. The, but the first thing I do is I want to create a seal. I don't want any water getting underneath my underneath my clay. So the first thing I do, and I usually do it with my little fingers as I'm starting to feel it, is that I create a seal. And you can already see that I've started to create a seal here at the bottom. It's not centered, but I, ha I haven't gotten to that part yet but I've created that seal. So now there won't be any water getting under my pot and disrupting uh, and moving it as I try to go through the pot. Most of the force now is coming from my right hand as I bring my hand in. And this hand is anchored into my hip. You can right here, it's anchored into my hip. 
So this lever doesn't change. Some people use a wall, some people whatever. I don't have a wall there, so I use my hip. And this becomes, this doesn't change once I go through the point of, of centering this piece of clay. I, it takes a lot of force. This is a big, big amount of clay. But what I'm doing is I'm really pressing. You can see where the work is happening on my hands. I'm pressing here and I'm pressing here. And I'm gonna slide and cone up this clay and I go up fairly slowly. Oops, the bat, <laughs> the bat moved. Okay, I just need to lubricate a bit more and I'm continuing to press. Starting to get a little hole in the top. You can't really see it. So what I end up doing then is I go here and I just round up the top a little bit now and it makes a point. Now I won't get that dreaded hole in the middle of my coning. And you can already see it's starting to try to center itself. I go through again. Now I've been doing pottery for 15 years. So for some of you, this still may be a, a difficult move to do. And some of you say, yeah, that's pretty easy. Um, but however you do it, it's just a matter of getting your hands and as if you had, if, as if you had a piece of string or something going right down, you just wanna go straight up then I just bend it over, and I don't know how this happens, but it always seems to come back into center. And I bring it down. Now I'm applying force here, and I'm, I'm still applying force with my hand at the top. I have a bit of a sore elbow, so this actually helps me to relieve some of that pressure. Then I just go back up. I don't make as big of a cone. Now I can feel it with my hands that this is nicely centered, but a way you can test it is you just hold your finger here and rest it, go very, very slowly, and you'll start to feel it. And if the clay is running smoothly under your finger, then you've got it centered. And if it's wobbling at all, then you need to just go back and you just need to apply equal force of pressure on either side, go back in, and come back down. That's what I do. My last one is I come back down from the top because I need to spread out this clay. Remember, it needs to be six inches. We've got our, and this is what I can do because my hand is nicely covered in clay and you can see the lines from the laser, the laser level I have. I, the laser level I have is called a Tavool, T-A-V-O-O-L. I bought it on Amazon, but it does a cross, crosswise and widthwise. It's a great, it's a great tool when you want to do repetitive pieces. If you're only going to make a one-off, then it doesn't matter. You don't need it. Okay. So now I need to know. Now I just do this, and I know I need to go out probably about another half an inch. So I'm going to just apply a little bit of pressure here in the middle with my finger. I'm using the knuckle of my baby finger. I can feel where center is and I'm pressing down and I'm just gonna push out a little bit and spread this ball of clay out a little bit. And I know once I open up and widen out, I'm gonna get a little more width, but you can see now I'm getting pretty close to my line. My line is going straight up my ring finger. So I'm pretty close. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay, and now we're going to go and we're going to make the well in the middle. And all I'm doing is just applying a little bit of pressure. Well, a lot of pressure, actually. Down with my middle knuckle. Now I'm going to go in with my fingers. And I do it on this. This is nice because it stays very, very straight. And it can make a little well in the middle of the pot when I'm, when I'm, when I'm going down. And this finger... It can feel the center. And I use this hand and I just push it down. So this now is my tool. And this is my force. And I'm just gonna go down. I do want a base on this pot. So I need to kind of eyeball it to where I think I'm at about three eighths of an inch on the bottom. Maybe a little bit more, but now I can use my multi-tool from Diamond Core. And I'm now about, about that deep. And that's about half an inch, so I want to go down a little bit more. I'm 
measure it again. That's a little bit thinner, but now you can see, you see how it's already starting to get really sloppy and dirty? Like, this tool really gets dirty. Well, I'm a dirty potter. Anyway, I'm gonna go down a little bit more, and then what I do is I go down, and then in, in one move, once I know I've reached the desired thickness of the floor of my pot, then I just start to pull myself out. And what I do is, is well, pour, pull myself out, pull the clay out, um, is that I go down and all I'm gonna do is just pull my hand back like that. And again, this hand is my tool. And what I'm gonna do is just slowly start to pull this back. And I'm starting to create an opening I can feel the clay starting to dry. So I just get a little more water, a little bit for the outside. And even if I get a little bit of a wobble here, I'm not really worried because I've got enough. You can hear the, I have an air bubble. Sorry, I have a little bit of a wobble. I didn't finish my sentence. And I and I can correct that as I'm throwing the pot. So I'm not really overly concerned. I was very concerned about wobbles and stuff like that when I was a when I was a young potter. And I used to spend so much time trying to fix all that. And then I've just found that it, you know, I can fix it as I throw the pot. So I'm really not too worried about it. Anyway, I'm now creating the floor and I'm going back and forth and compressing the floor. Now, because the shape of the vessel in what I'm doing is gonna be straight sided and it's gonna have a bit of curve at the bottom, I don't need the base, the very base of my pot to be that full, um, that full six inches wide. So now this is where my calipers and my shrink rule come into play. I can now take a measurement with the side of my caliper then I can go to my rule and I can so this now is about five, it's gonna end up being about five inches across on the bottom. So I don't, I don't really mind that, but I think I'm gonna take it out just a little bit more. So I get back in here and pull this out just a little bit more. Okay. Now I'm just compressing the bottom and I take my finger and I just go down the side and I just it across and I press down a little bit just to compress the bottom to make sure that I don't get any S cracks but S cracks I avoid that by the way I dry them and whatever I rarely rarely get an S crack in my pottery okay so now I'm ready to even out the sides so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do in my first little thing I just want to I want to a straighten out the inside of the wall and I want to you can see that there's a bit of a curve here in the clay I want to I want to straighten that out as well so I want to make an even thickness now so that I can start pulling up my wall remember we're going to take you can see with this with this laser level now we're going to take the pot to this high okay so I make sure I lubricate both the inside and the outside of this pot I'm gonna take my fingers of my left hand and I'm just gonna do a little bit of a grip. I'm gonna feel in and when I feel a good point, I don't want it too thin on the first one. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pretty much lock my finger and my thumb and I'm just gonna lift them up and that's going to even out that bulge. And I also, what I do is with my right hand, I'm supporting my left hand and I'm using the sponge and I'm compressing down on the rim. So I'm holding that down as well. So I'm kind of doing a whole bunch of things here at once. A, I'm helping to, to center the clay if it's gone off center. B, I'm evening out the thickness of my wall. And B, I'm just keeping a tab on the, on the top of the pot in, and that helps to keep it round as well and make sure I don't go off center. So here we go, I'm gonna squeeze and I'm just gonna lift slowly. And I go slowly at this point because this is gonna be a wide pot and I have to make sure that I continue with the revolutions. I can feel it getting a little dry. I'm going slowly, slower than I normally would. Okay. 
And there you go. Now this is pretty thick, but that's okay because as we throw our pot, it will thin out. But now you can see that bulge is gone. I can now take a measurement with my ruler and figure out how wide I am. I'm at about five and three quarters, which is good because remember, my shape of my pot is gonna go like that. There's gonna be a curve at the bottom. So as I move up the pot, I can, I can make that just a little bit wider. And then you can also see on here, well, it's to the, to the mark of my laser. So see how we go. So here now I've got my hand here on the inside and I've got my finger now on the outside of my right hand. What's gonna happen is, as I'm just gonna do a little bit of a compression, then I'm gonna lift my left hand up to about maybe a quarter of an inch above my right hand, and then the two hands are just gonna go up together simultaneously. Okay, so that's the movement I'm gonna do. Keeping this, my inside hand, slightly above my outside finger. Actually, I don't. I, I, I do it with this finger here. So I squeeze a little bit and this will start to bring. Now I'm lifting up my inside finger and now I'm just gonna move these two up together and you can see the pot start to rise. Okay, I clean the top making sure it keeps round, okay? We're probably halfway there, just on the first pull. Lubricate my side, lubricate the inside, because if I, if I hit a dry spot, it will knock my pot off center. So now what I'm gonna do is, I've got the base about where I want it. I'm gonna press in a little bit with my finger. Now this is where my outs, my inside finger now is going to push out a little bit and you're gonna see a little bit of a bulge in the clay. You can see that happening now. You can see it there. And now I'm going to just bring these two fingers up, two hands up together. The speed at what I go is depending on how fast I'm turning my wheel. And I keep going all the way to the top. Okay, so we're almost there. So now you can see how much higher I have to go. I have about another inch and a half. Okay, and I know the clay is there because I can feel it in the thickness. So again, Lubricate the outside, lubricate the inside. This is where I can also, as I say, this is a kind of a medium, a medium skilled piece. Press on the bottom, get that little bulge there. Now, I'm having trouble reaching because I've gone high enough. So now I'm just gonna have to do these, my hands independently. And then once I get to a point where my hands can touch, I very carefully bring my other hand out so that my hands are con contacting each other. And I continue my pull. And you can see on my finger here that I'm almost at the height I wanna be at. Okay. Now, as you can see, I've flared out. So I need to bring that in a little bit. I'm just gonna do that with my hands and apply equal pressure. Just let that spin around a few times and let the clay come back in. remove my hands carefully. Okay, so we are now quarter of an inch off our target height. 
and I can get that quarter of an inch as I do in this last pull. And I'm also gonna work on finishing the shape. So I want it to have a little bit of a curve in the bottom. So again, I'm gonna press in with my finger here. Press out. This is gonna be my final pull. You can see on the top of my pot now, you can see the line. Okay. So now, because this is the first one I'm throwing today, I'm just gonna check my measurements with my shrink rule. Again, I'm using the 12% side, and I'm gonna measure here, and this is exactly six inches. And then I'm gonna measure here, and you can see there, it's at the seven inch, seven inch mark, and you can tell that I'm a little bit above what I set the gauge to. And here's where I go in now. Uh, sorry, I didn't show you this at the beginning with my uh, wooden rib. And I'm going to just tuck it in a little bit on the bottom. I don't know, I want to refine the outside. You can see that it's all kind of uneven. And now this is where you'll start to see the side of the pot straighten up. The more care I take here at this point, the less I have to do at the trimming stage. Then I wanna just secure the rim, which I really should have been doing between each of my poles and I've gotten lazy and I don't do that as often as I should. But you can see now how in just correcting the sides and taking a little bit of the clay and evening out the sides, I lost a little bit of the height, which I, I kind of knew it was going to happen. So I wasn't really too concerned at the, at the end of my third pull that I went above my line. You can see the little bit of thing, uh, a little bit of thing, the little bit of uh, laser light there. And then when I put my finger here, we're also spot on. So I'll just take my tool and I'll just refine that. And that's the pot made. I take this tool, which I think I showed you at the beginning, and now I'm just gonna go in and I'm just gonna refine this bottom, because doing it now means I don't do it at the trimming stage. And I just take that and throw it out. And then, like every pot I make, I put a little bevel in the bottom, because that's where the cutoff wire is gonna go. I'm gonna take my sponge and I use a different sponge because the, the as beautiful as the diamond core tool sponges are, and I love working with it, there's no doubt about it, it's not very absorbent when you wanna take the moisture out the bottom of your pot. So I have a, uh, a real sponge and I just go in there and I just tidy up and take all the moisture out of the bottom. You can even see in doing that, I created another little wobble in my pot. And then it just turned a few times and you can see the, the, the slip that I got off of the bottom. I'm gonna go back in here because I can see a little bit of a wobble. Just fix that up. And then one thing I don't have is, uh, I have a little chamois, so let me just take a second and lubricate that. So what's gonna happen after this, because if you were watching this, you probably saw me unloading, unloading the finished product on my last kiln unloading. Is that when it dries, or uh, sorry, after I trim it, I have a, pardon me, two things here, this. Okay. 
this is my slip slip um my bottle of slip and it's just the same bee mix clay and i've just thinned it down so it, it's of slip consistency and then after i trim it i'm just going to i'm going to apply the dots in a pattern and on the ones i showed you in the unloading video on my last video i did them in triangles and i'm going to replicate that I've had several people message me and say they want some. So, but what was the, what was so magical was the glaze. But I liked the way the, the dots created, um, created a bit of texture and the, the break of the clay over those dots was really, really beautiful. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try and do that again. So there we go. This pot is finished going to take my under my wire and I'm just going to go underneath and I leave this pot on my back because I don't want to distort it I'm going to use my love museum tool and where it's attached to the wheel I just kind of wiggle it wiggle it under I don't want to wiggle it too much or move it too drastically because I don't want to misshape my pot and I just slide it over onto the bat pin now I can get my hands underneath and I can lift it up. And there's my pot. So there we go. And you can see how nice and even the sides are. That's a well-made pot. And when I take this off, I can feel the balance in the pot. I, this just comes with experience and working with it. But if I had too much clay down here, it would feel really weighty. And if I had too much clay up here, it would, it, it would just, you would feel the off balance. I feel a beautiful balance in this pot. So what I'm gonna do for you now is I'm going to do one in real time. And I'll just show you, and I won't say anything because I've really explained everything there is to explain in the making of the pot. I leave these pots on the bat for a good, probably up until the evening when I wrap them up for the night. And then at that point, they'll have stiffened, stiffened up enough where I'll be able to, um, I'll be able to take them off the bat quite easily and then just dry them for tonight. And then I can trim them tomorrow. So here we go. This is, uh, this is real speed. And there's a leaf blower in the background. I apologize for the noise. So while I'm making this, I'm not going to talk about technique or whatever. I'm just going to try and replicate the things that I told you earlier on. But I want to tell you about my weekend in New York. My daughter, for those of you that know or don't know, was an Olympic athlete. And uh, she rose for Canada. I am actually Canadian by birth, but reside in Jamaica right now. And um, my daughter was born in Jamaica, but is a naturalized Canadian citizen through my citizenship. Anyway, for the last 17 years, my daughter has been on the Canadian national rowing team, starting out as a, as a junior and then went through the under 23s and then into the elite level. And she started her rowing, rowing career in a school in Connecticut called Kent School, which is just about an hour and a half, two hour drive north of uh, New York City. And Kent School, this past weekend, had a celebration of 50 years of girls rowing at Kent. And, sorry, I just need to think about where I am in the pot when I take a break and Yeah, so anyway, they had a lovely brunch and a celebration, but one of the things that they did was they dedicated a boat in my daughter's honor because my daughter went to the Olympics and she went, in, um, she went to Rio in Brazil and in as much as they were in medal position towards the end of the race, they ultimately did not medal and it was very disappointing. But I'm proud to say that um, in the Tokyo Olympics, her boat won a gold medal in the women's eight. And 
uh, that just kind of made up for everything. My daughter has now since retired and is, is working in the corporate world. But um, anyway, Kent School had decided to uh, honor her and her success in rowing over the years at Kent School and beyond. She went to University of Virginia where she won the NCAA championships. She's competed in nine world championships at the elite level and a few years at the under 23s. So uh, she's very accomplished. Anyway, um, a big honor for a rower is when they name a boat after you and Kent did that this weekend and they, uh, they named their newest boat in her honor, which is the first time Kent School in a hundred years of rowing, over a hundred years of rowing, have, have dedicated a boat to an athlete as opposed to a donor or somebody who is very prolific in Kent rowing over the years, being coaches or, or whatever. So I was really, uh, really honored to be a part of that uh, that occasion and she gave speeches and she just spoke very eloquently and beautifully and it, it was just a spectacular weekend but at the beginning of the weekend we spent a day in New York City and uh, went to Times Square she had never seen Times Square before and um, we went and saw the uh, the tree at Rockefeller Rockefeller Plaza we walked in in Central Park like we just did all kinds of really great things and we went to the Lion King. So it was a spectacular weekend. Um, my hands are rusty, my everything about it. I'm pottery, I had to, had to, uh, had to sit still for a few days. But anyway, um, at the end of the day, I had a magnificent mother-daughter weekend as we celebrated her success in rowing. And I'm really gonna be quiet now because I have a leaf blower in the background that's gonna be making a lot of noise. So I apologize for that. I've got a bit of a air bubble here. Right here, and I'll just use my tool and work around it. It's gonna get really loud now, and I'm, I'm very sorry for the audio, so I will be quiet as I finish this pot. I will say thank you very much for watching and if you like the video please hit the like button if you haven't subscribed to my channel i invite you to subscribe and um, you can turn off the volume now for the rest of this video while i finish up this pot and have a great day everybody thank you for uh, thank you for watching
Okay. This one's giving me a bit of trouble, guys. Got a blip in here. I don't know if it's an air bubble or what, but it's... I'm gonna have to abandon this one. Because I hate to. Get so far in the process and then something's gonna happen to it. I don't like this one as much as I like the first one I did. My hands have incredibly good memory and I can usually replicate things pretty easily. Okay. So I'm just gonna measure it anyway and it's exactly six. And it's a little short, you can see it's a little shorter. But you know what, I'm making three today. So I'll try and make the next one the same as the last one. So this just goes to show you that not, not everything works out according to plan, but it's not a write-off because I don't have to make them in pairs. I choose to, but I don't have to. Okay, there we go run my wire underneath <coughs> and put this aside. Clean up this bat a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. There you have it. So thanks again.